Today I'm going to finish this encampment and a comment from the last video suggested a river cave and I thought that was a pretty good idea. It would give a reason to have actual encampments on this lakeside and it would make this flat featureless wall look a little bit more interesting. So if we zoom out so we can get a more topographical view of the landscape um, we can see roughly what we want to do by hitting G just go to top down mode you can get a good overview of the terrain in free camera mode you get a more dynamic view of the terrain and this is what I prefer to edit in so I can get a view of the scene being made up as it's being made there is a problem editing terrain in this view insofar as the contents of your receptacle will change as you edit the terrain and because you're at an odd angle it could have unexpected consequences for example if I wish to flatten terrain and I press here intending the mountain it would bore through the mountain and get to the terrain behind it if I hit it the wrong way whereas in the top down mode I know exactly what I'm doing because it's all one angle. Um, that said, it's good to use both views so you can get a good idea of what you're doing from the player's eye view and avoid gouges in your terrain. Now I'm going to load it back in because as far as river caves go that's a little bit too big. Right, if I hit G to the full top down view, scroll back so I can see, and take my level terrain brush, minus to lower the size of the receptacle, and I will have it around about here, going like that. Now, there's the basic shape I want. Now I'm going to go in and make it look not weird. A uh, technical term. Um, you can increase the size of that a little bit and make that a bit wider. Because I want people to actually get through it, but not to be able to see past it very well. Um, so they'd swim through and appear into a cave. Now, the first thing I can see is these very sharp edges on the mountain, stretch textures. That is not good. That will be addressed first. The second thing is we need to encapsulate the player so he can't just run away from the mountain, which means I'm going to extend this mountain range slightly to encompass the area that the cave is going to be. And three, I want the player to be able to get out of the water and explore the cave a little bit. So I need to gradient the floor from the waterbed to the surface bed. And I will do these things in that order. The first thing I'm actually going to do is to create a boundary for the cave wall um, so the players can't escape. Um, the other things to be done are best done after that step. So the first step is to create the boundary, much as we did with the initial map. So if I take the level mode brush, find the place on top of the mountain and just draw um, a decent sized cave and then link it back up to the mountain. Uh, we're using this mountain as a sort of um, edge to our play area and so it's a twofold purpose. There we go. Now that gives us a bit of water when we're in the cave and some floor space. Um, I want to level this out a little bit so the players can come in by the water and then walk up onto a kind of shore into the cave. So if I make use of the ramp mod from the bottom of the water to the cave floor, I can create a sort of a natural way to come out of the water and into the cave. Um, at this point I'd like to tweak it because as you can see there's texture stretch and there's jagged lines it's very 
rough hewn. So this step is about um, smoothing out and making nice. So the blend mod brush is best used here. So you go and you just blend out small areas to remove the excessively jagged areas of your cave. Now I know what you're thinking, caves tend to have roofs. We're going to add that on later. It makes it a lot easier to edit the inside of your cave when you don't have to do it through a roof. Um, also, the roof is going to be composed of um, static entities rather than um, a geometry like the terrain's made out of. Um, the reason for this is because you can have a much more uh, stylized roof if you're using directly placed um, dan um, static entities. And it's easy to change as well if you want to add things like stalactites, um, rock outcroppings, hangings, things like that, things that are cavey. So you just take your brush and just go over all these elements here. Um, the waterline is really can point out jagged edges, so use that to help you find out where the edges are. Um, you want to get as smooth as possible, because if this is a true river cave, the rocks will have been eroded by the passage of water for years and so it will be really quite smooth there we go now there wouldn't be grass in a cave like this so what I'd like to do is go to the paint texture brush find a nice rock and then paint rocks everywhere where there's grass um, because I'm using this texture it's blending from the grass to the rock, so you get all these nice little subtle variances to make it look mottled and mossy and generally nice. You want to get all that grass, even at the bottom of the river. You don't want grass to. We apply it here as well. There shouldn't be any grass at the bottom of the river. River. Um, I suppose you could call it a river. Kind of like a creek. Or a, just a a cleft in the rocks where the waters come in. Now, you see these stretch in here. We're not going to bother with that yet. That's going to be done as we design the cave entrance. Right now, I'm focusing on the cave itself. So, if you look at it from a top view, G, you can see the play will come through here. We'll be able to come up here, and then something could be here. Monster, treasure, or absolutely nothing. Have a completely red herring. It's up to you. Now, I like that, so I'm going to save it again. You could iterate the save, or you could use the older save. That is entirely up to you. One thing you could do is it's 1.7 right now. You could put 1.7.1. So this is the first save in the seventh bit of the first tutorial. And that way you can have many iterations without going into silly numbers.